Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today I'm taking a look at another black green mid-range deck, although this one is a bit more of a ramp deck than a true mid-range deck compared to the one I've featured last week. So this one is not playing the Dread Knight, and instead we're focusing on some two mana ramp cards, Bramble Familiar, we've got Loom Speaker as well as the Iron Crag, so eight ways to accelerate our mana so we can potentially play a four drop on turn three, and that's where four copies of Blossoming Tortoise will come in handy at 3-3. When it enters a battlefield or attacks we get to mill three cards and then return a land card from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Blossoming Tortoise has a lot of great synergies throughout the deck, since activated abilities of our lands we control cost one less to activate, and land creatures we control get plus one plus one. So the obvious inclusion in a black green deck is going to be our creature land a restless cottage, which is also quite good against red aggro as it can generate food tokens when attacking, which can gain us three life. And then as a 4-4 creature it's also pretty substantial once we have a tortoise in play it turns into a 5-5 and only three mana to activate activate. Then another great card alongside Tortoise is our Riveteer's Overlook, a fetch land that when it enters it gains one life and can find a forest or swamp to put in play tapped. This also means that we'll always have a fetch land in the graveyard to get back with Tortoise, because sometimes it does happen that you play Tortoise, you don't mill any lands, and you didn't have any in the graveyard to begin with, so then you feel pretty bad. So now with a fetch land it's less likely to happen. And then the added life gain and deck thinning can also come in handy. And then I also have two copies of Argoth, Sanctum of Nature, which can be another nice mana sink, getting a discount from our tortoise, and then this can generate two to bear tokens to get on the board, while also putting additional cards into our graveyard, so that can find additional lands as well as put additional creatures in the graveyard that we can then eventually get back with our virtue of persistence. Because despite being a ramp deck, if you look at the curve, it seems relatively low. But if you actually look at the curve, we have a lot of seven drops. We've got four copies of Virtue of Persistence, four copies of Rex and Flesh Gorger, and even Fetch Quest that we can play for seven mana. So the deck is capable of having a pretty low to the ground curve, but at the same time in the late game we still don't lack options. Virtue of Persistence first being a removal spell that can gain some life and great against red aggro, and then late game we can play the seven mana enchantment from Exile that will return a creature from any graveyard turn after turn, so that's where having a lot of self-mill effects to consistently keep getting creatures back from the graveyard will come in handy. We've got our four copies of Tortoise, two copies of Argoth, Fetch Quest will also mill additional cards into the graveyard, and even two copies of Seed of Hope which can gain a bit of life and maybe find a permanent in the top two. So all those cards also contribute towards our reanimation plan. And then a Flesh Gorger of course great against Moderate Aggro as a 3-3 with Menace and Lifelink and a bit of built-in protection. And then late game we can cast the 7 mana 7-5 with those same abilities. Also excellent if we mill it, because if we get it back with Virtue it will come into play as a 7-5 as opposed to a 3-3. And the same is true for the Fetch Quest Adventure. If we mill seven cards and get back Flesh Gorger, it will be the seven mana version. And also very nice to get back a Virtue of Persistence with our Fetch Quest Adventure. And then the Familiar is also just a totally fine mana creature tapping for green. So we can cast a turn three Tortoise or maybe even a turn three Shieldred, which is still part of our game plan, but it's not as pronounced as in the other Golgari midrange. And then also very fun is to include Titania in this build, as we can eventually meld it with Argoth into Titania Gaia Incarnate it, which will get back all our lands from the graveyard. Titania can also gain a lot of life against moderate aggro, especially when paired with Riveteer's Overlook, which will guarantee that a land ends up in our graveyard to gain the extra two life, in addition to the one we already gain with Overlook. And then if we combine that with Tortoise, we can set up a very nice life gain engine. And then it's also Reach Creature, which can help block opposing flyers like Phoenix Chick, and that's something that Black Green can sometimes be vulnerable to. And then a Glissa, still a very nice card to include in any deck, can help deal with opposing enchantments, can maybe draw a few extra cards as well. And then we already mentioned some of the other ramp cards. Loam Speaker also has synergy with Tortoise, as it will give our 3-3 land the plus one plus one bonus. And then at the Iron Crag as another ramp card that's harder for the opponent to interact with. And we've got a few legendary creatures to turn it into an equipment in the late game, should we draw the second copy. And then more spot removal to complement our Virtue of Persistence. We've got Cut Down and two copies of Go for the Throat. So definitely focusing on the cheaper and more efficient removal spells to deal with mono red aggro, compared to having more answers to larger creatures or planeswalkers, which is of course a choice we're making in deck building. And then a Seed of Hope has also been pretty nice, gives us a bit more life gain against red aggro and can also smooth out our draws, maybe fill the graveyard to enable some of our synergies, so it's a very nice role player, but still want to limit the number of instants and sorceries in the deck, because then Seed of Hope itself becomes a lot weaker too, since we risk missing if we don't reveal a permanent. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, we are looking at a turn 3 tortoise, so I'm keeping 
up against a red aggro turn one Kumano, so the ideal start for them on the play. Don't have uh, untapped mana to keep up cut down, but their next creature would likely be a 3 3 anyways. As we see, turn two Felden, so our opponent has not missed a beat yet. We're probably still gonna go for Loam Speaker, which could block the 2 2 etching of Kumano. And then they could finish it off, in which case we can follow up with either Flash Gorger or Glissa. Godric's not bad here, gains flying. So we'll take seven. And I could double spell, but cut down's not all that amazing here. Virtue of Persistence, on the other hand, is not bad. Can take out Godric, and then I can still cut down Etching. Or we can just play Tortoise and then next turn double spell. Which might still be better, although it means if they have removal for Tortoise, I won't have any blockers and take 8 potentially, maybe even more. Alright, Virtue seems like the slightly safer play here. Take out Godric. Even though taking out Felden with Virtue means they don't get to draw any extra cards. And then we'll just pass with Cut Down available, likely going for Etching. If Etching attacks, they could have the Pump Spell here. I think either way I go for the block. Opponent had a Monster Rage, targets Felden, that happens. And then... Yeah, I could let damage happen, I could cut down now. I think I cut down now, so they can finish off Loam Speaker with a 2 damage burn spell. Didn't seem like they had a second Monster Rage, so we're at 5. And another Kumano. And make that double Kumano. We're at three. Okay, Boseju could be channeled. If I play Glissa, we can hold off Felden. Opponent does get to dig for a burn spell. And then I would still have Loam Speaker to block Foundry. For opponent top decks, three damage burn spell or haste creature were probably dead. But that might be the plan here. And then next turn play Flesh Gorger. If I play Flesh Gorger now we can double block Felden, gain three, but our opponent gets to dig four cards deep. Flesh Gorger will line up better once our opponent gets a bunch of two twos with haste. So for now I like Glissa, and then we do still have Boseju for one mana available, as we now control a legendary. And hope they didn't top deck anything too powerful. Mishra's Foundry is active. So, can just block, block. And if they top decked another Monstrous Rage, we can punish the Foundry with Boseju. And that's what they had. Awesome. And we get to take out Felden here. Without taking any trample damage since it dies during first strike. They do still get to dig three cards deep. If they find Lightning Strike, we could be in trouble. They found another Kumano and Phoenix Chick, which if they played here would still get the two plus one counters. So that would be a lethal threat. Now Glissa can remove counters from creatures as well. So maybe that's the plan. Attack with Glissa, removing two counters from Phoenix Chick. And then play Flesh Gorger to block the two twos on the ground. I think that's the move here. Don't have the mana to play Cottage and sank the food to gain life, which would be the ideal sequence. Could also destroy an enchantment, but have to deal with the flyer. So we're still dead to another burn spell or potentially some flying creatures. And a squee. Alright, that's close to good enough, but we get to untap. So now Flesh Gorger can attack. Glissa can also destroy enchantments. And then we've got another Flesh Gorger we can play, plus go for the throat, so I'm liking that sequence. 
opponent takes it. And let's just destroy enchantments. Back up to five, so feeling a little bit safer. And pass with go for the throat available. Alright, super close one here against Monorats, and they were off to pretty much the ideal start. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable enough. Turn two can play Bramble Familiar. Turn three, Cedophobe can dig for another creature perhaps. And we've got a few creature lands to go with it as well. Put on green white. So turn two familiar, turn three, Flash Gorger plus maybe Seed of Hope. Facing green white enchantments. So finding a Glissa would be excellent in this matchup. For now, play familiar. Turn two Weaver, that's kind of a must answer to an extent. If they copy ossification triggers, that's pretty scary. So could go Iron Crag and then still play Flesh Gorger. Although if I want to go for the throat, I guess we could Iron Crag, go for the throat and Seed of Hope. That's pretty efficient. And then let's see here. Activated or triggered ability. Could wait on go for the throat, I suppose. Maybe that changes the opponent's sequencing. And they can copy the Visitor trigger, since that's not an enchantment. It's gonna be Calyx. Okay, Calyx is also worth taking out, of course. So, tough choice. So I could just kill Weaver. And then hope to block Calyx, but with all the plus one counters, we're quickly gonna be in chum block mode. So I think I still take out Calyx instead and hope they don't have a backup copy. Could Seed of Hope first, of course, and then see if that changes my decision. Alright, we did actually find Glissa, that's excellent. So does that change my reasoning? Calyx and Weaver are both quite scary for opponent has ossification in hand, not much I can do about it. With ossification and Weaver they can exile two of my blockers including Glissa. If I rely on Glissa to hold off Calyx and the ossification then they also get to snowball. So pretty much if our opponent has ossification we're in trouble. So in that case I guess we can take out Weaver, save ourselves a bit of damage in the process. And then I can even double spell three drops. So we can go for Glissa plus Titania. And then I don't think we're transforming Iron Crank since we'll need it to cast a seven mana Flesh Gorger or to activate Cottage. So yeah, Ossification still a nightmare scenario because it would grow Calyx up to a 4-4 easily and then essentially force me to chump whatever creature they don't exile. Commune goes digging. Can they find it? It's going to be a Reign of Truth. That's fine. Making one creature enormous doesn't matter in the face of Glissa. And a Kami. So Kami's likely chumping Glissa if I attack with it. Which, you know, is fine. Although I would like to have this on defense if possible. And one mana short of playing a seven mana Flesh Gorger. So instead we could animate Cottage which can't quite exile the Kami, since we have to find a target before the damage happens. Could also play 3 mana Flesh Gorger, but I think I'm going to be patient. And then, for now, just play another Cottage. And, uh, yeah, I think just pass a turn, keep all my blockers back. Although that does mean that they'll just be able to chump with Kami next turn. So maybe it is fine to send in Glissa, make them chump. And then we'll have Cottage back on defense as an extra blocker as well. And then we can try and exile Kami next turn. Audacity, okay, so now they can try and copy an enchantment with Calyx. And they also go for Reign of Truth. They will be able to make one creature quite large. So 
So 11 power, there's no way I can put enough toughness in front is there. 8, 9, 10, so they would still trample over. I would trade for Visitor, but then they would also get back Kami before I get a chance to exile it. If we let Visitor hit us, what happens? Our opponent can copy either Reign of Truth or Audacity. Which is not ideal. I can gain a bunch of life with Overlook plus Titania next turn. Cottage could exile Kami. Or we can try and go for 7 mana Flesh Gorger. And then hold Glissa back on defense as opposed to attacking and forcing a chump. So maybe I do just trade here for Cottage. Potent can take out all three of my creatures. But we also kill Visitor. And then I still have Glissa to deal with Calyx. Now I'm regretting not playing the Overlook first to potentially gain a bunch of life with Titania. But we do still have Cottage as an option to try and attack the opponent's graveyard, although they will be getting back Kami of Transients now. Okay, Tortoise was a good draw, so Glissa attacks, her opponent's probably gonna chump, doesn't really matter, Calyx is dying no matter what. And then play Tortoise. If we don't have any lands in Graveyard we could play Overlook to guarantee one, but with Cottage we may as well uh, get back the Cottage. Okay. So a Reign of Truth without any targets is good for us. And there's still an unanswered Glissa. Third Reign of Truth. Okay. Glissa can keep attacking. Tortoise, I don't mind trading for Kami. Question then is what to do next? Probably just a big Flash Gorger. Can get back the fetch lane to gain a bit of life, thin out the deck. Make future top decks even better. Opponent takes it. And then we can destroy an enchantment here. Opponent has double Reign of Truth, one of which is a copy. So I guess it's best to destroy the real one. And then uh, opponent gets to pump their Kami with the third Reign of Truth. That seems acceptable. And they're at 11 in the meantime. Another Calyx. Okay. What's their last card? Another Audacity. Yep, so they do get to copy with Calyx once again. And they can avoid trading for Flesh Gorger. So, yeah, no point in blocking. Opponent gets to copy probably another Reign of Truth. They could put Audacity on Calyx. So for not having drawn any ossifications, our opponent's certainly putting up a fight. And they're shielded now too. So opponent's at 11, 7's going through, so they're at a virtual uh, 4 life. So if we send Cottage, they should just be dead. Could even send double Cottage, thanks to the discount from Tortoise. It's usually a good idea to leave creatures in the opponent's graveyard when we can reanimate them with our virtue of uh, persistence. But the game's over anyway, so it's fine. So yeah, needed Glissa in this matchup. We found it thanks to an early Seed of Hope. And got to see plenty of cool synergies in action here. So 
sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn two can go for Loom Speaker. Although if we expect to be attacking with our creatures, maybe Familiar can hit for two and is a bit better. Probably want to hang on to one of them to fetch quest eventually. Okay, against the red aggro. I think I prefer Loam Speaker since it's more likely to survive. And then next turn we could double spell Glissa plus cut down. It's going to be an adversary, so we can soak up two damage now too. Ooh, nice turn three tortoise. Seems good. Opponent kind of has to kill it, otherwise we get to snowball additional lanes. Although, actually missed here. Alright, that's one way we can potentially still fall behind. Glissa plus cut down would have looked a lot better now. But it looks like a 3-3 on defense is still pretty effective. And now we get an extra attack with the tortoise. And hopefully we'll find a land this time. Could also animate Cottage if we tap Loam Speaker, thanks to the discount, but probably want to use our mana elsewhere. Alright, we did find a land, including a fetch land, so we can gain one life. And now we're basically guaranteed to always hit a land with Tortoise. Save a double block here with the smaller creatures, which we could punish. They just take it. In which case, play Glissa, keep up cut down. Debating whether or not I should cut down one of the creatures now. Especially Swift Spear if it's about to grow. Opponent did have a Lightning Strike, but they were saving it for Glissa. Yeah, let's just let that happen. I can potentially punish a Monstrous Rage with Cut Down by blocking a smaller creature. All right, it looks like our opponents can enable Celebration. So can block one of the two powered creatures and take out the other. Although they still have mana for potential Monstrous Rage here. So block Adversary, I think. So don't lose Loam Speaker to another Prowess Trigger. And our opponent's just going to pump Godric. So we'll cut down Swiss Spear. And only take five. Now we don't have any life gain besides Cottage, but now Virtue can answer Godric and we're in business. Okay, so Tortoise can keep attacking. And then we'll uh, deal with Godric. Wouldn't be shocked if our opponent had another Godric in hand. And then next turn I can definitely see myself activating Restless Cottage. Or we could try and hard cast the 7 mana enchantment thanks to the familiars. So yeah, Torda's doing a lot of work. Good to see a game against Modereds where they curved out perfectly and we needed all the removal, Glissa and Flesh Gorger. This time we got to see a slightly different game with Tordus giving us extra mana. Boseju. Yeah, going for Virtue, certainly reasonable. Could also fetch Quest, but one of our better hits would be another Virtue. Question is whether I want to animate Cottage, but at 15 I don't feel the need to make a food token here. And if they want to trade for Tortoise, that's fine by me since Virtue can just get it back. And get another Overlook. The life gain here is also adding up. And we could see a double block now. Virtue can get back Shieldred. End of turn, Witch Docker Frenzy, killing Loam Speaker. Start point setting up a good attack. Taking at least four. Can expect him to have another hasty creature. Crucible channeled. That's still pretty beatable. 
Now we don't really have any sweepers to deal with, a bunch of small stuff. But we do have life gain in the form of shield roots, which looks good here. And we drew another tortoise, so with double tortoise we get a 2 mana discount on cottage. So could have played tortoise and then still animated a very cheap cottage attack. And then if we're not presenting lethal at least we'll have a bunch of food we can sacrifice. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Not the most exciting hand, but not bad enough to mulligan. We got our creature land. Turn to Loam Speaker. And we'll see if our opponent's on an aggressive deck. Looks like blue white soldiers. So expecting reinforcements, which we can block quite nicely with our Loam Speaker. So yeah, having a bunch of removal is good in this matchup. There's quite a few powerful 3-drops we could see here. Just a Thalia. In that case, can play Flesh Gorger. And then next turn, maybe double spell to removal spells. Don't think we'll be able to wait for 7 mana Flesh Gorger. It's going to be the Shield of Argive, definitely a must answer. So I can spend 3 mana Virtue on Thalia, and then 2 mana for uh, Shield of Argive here. Could attack, see if they want to double block, and then essentially eat a token for free, which I kind of like in this spot. Since reducing their soldiers in play is a worthwhile effort. And then now we'll have to take out the shield now. And then we're getting closer to a 7 mana Virtue. Veteran pumps a team. And another Thalia. Alright, that's gonna slow us down a little bit. Shield is not bad. So I can attack with Flash Gorger for opponent double blocks. We take out Veteran take out Thalia for free, basically. Opponent's probably going to take it, and then I'll play Shieldred, which is still good. Does mean we won't get to play Virtue next turn. And there's Brutal Cathar. Alright, so that's going after Shieldred's. Clear path for an attack. But we still have to go for the throw to get our shield root back, even at instant speed. Not gonna channel Boseju. Alright, so can play 3 mana Flesh Gorger and go for the throat. And then we'll get shield root back now to drain the opponents. Hit for three. And then next turn with an untapped land we can cast an eight mana Virtue of Persistence. Bonus down to seven in the meantime. Siege Veteran pretty good here. Grow Thalia and now we won't have a good attack with our menacing Flesh Gorgers. But Shieldred can maybe help cross the finish line. Let's see if I were to attack with Cottage and everyone else. What happens? Could also animate a land with Loam Speaker. So we'd have 4-4, four, 3-3, four, three, three, pair of 3-3 three, three Menace and Shieldred. Then they'll have a hard time blocking all the Flesh Gorgers. It's definitely close to a spot where we could try an all-out attack. Although just sitting back and trying to win with Shieldred could also be reasonable. The main concern is another Brule Cathar. So if this is a window where we can maybe get an attack in, I should at least look at it. Uh, if our opponent's got another reinforcements in hand, things could also get awkward. So I think it's reasonable to just uh, play land and pass. And then try and get there with Virtue of Persistence. We have the late game. And they still need to handle Shieldred. With a beach hand, they could pump the team. 
We still have a cottage on defense. Second siege veteran's acceptable. So attacking on the ground's going to be pretty tough now. But we may not have to. And then Virtue getting back Brutal Cathar is also going to be pretty effective. Opponent actually attacks since they're probably running out of time. And uh, yeah, we have 8 mana lined up anyway, so we don't have to take out Thalia. And then let's see if we block with Cottage, double Flesh Gorger. It's not a bad block. Opponent would get two replacement tokens. They would lose Thalia, and then we would lose either a Cottage or a Flesh Gorger. And we also gained a bunch of life. So now the main concern is Harbin giving their team flying. So is there a reason to make any attacks? I guess any trades that happen are good for us in this spot. Although they can just double block Flash Gorgers with a bunch of 2-2s. Two and I don't even think Harbin is necessarily lethal since we're at 30. So I think we are okay passing. And then next turn get back maybe a Brutal Cathar. And then we can try and go for lethal. So double siege veteran triggers. We're probably exiling Valiant Veteran here with a Brutal Cathar. Opponent goes all out. So Beachhead, they can activate at any point. So gotta factor that in. So yeah, let's say we double block Siege Veteran, block another one. Even if they have Iganjo here instead to finish off Shieldred, that's not a concern. And then we could also get back a 7-mana Flesh Gorger instead. Opponent did have Igancho, so they get to finish off Shieldred. Still get to finish off Double Veteran. And our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's decent against aggressive creature decks, not very good elsewhere. But I'll give it a shot. Turn on Mountain. And Kumano, so... Should be a fine matchup to keep this hand at least. And then we can keep up cut down, even though it may not find the targets. If our opponent's got a hasty 2 drop, that turns into a 3 3. Flame Breather, so that's a 2 4. Also survives cut down and survives Virtue of Persistence. So that's pretty bad for us. Now I have to decide between Swamp or Forest for Titania. But Swamp also enables us to Virtue plus cut down in the same turn. So that seems worthwhile. Can cut down etching and then next turn virtue plus cut down flame breather is an option, but there may be better lines available. Another flame breather, that one we can cut down. And a Kumano trigger double flame breather. So I'll start by cutting down etching. And then next turn. Probably just Virtue on Flame Breather, could also play Flash Gorger. Although if they have a Lightning Strike, we would end up taking a lot of damage. Possible just going Virtue Cut Down, the biggest Flame Breather was worth it, since I may not be able to use Cut Down elsewhere. Although at the very least we can kill Kumano next turn. Alright, so don't have high hopes for Flesh Gorger surviving, so I think I'd rather just keep up cut down, make sure we don't take any damage from Kumano. And then we even have a second one in case of a monstrous rage to try and get it out of range from cut down. Opponent fires off a flurry of burn spells. For damage coming our way, but we should be able to handle etching and Swiss spear. And another lightning strike, so opponents certainly had enough for lethal if it weren't for all these removal spells, and we're still gonna be down to two life. So 
So playing Flesh Gorger may be the correct play, since it's more likely to keep me alive when facing, let's say, a Squee top deck from the opponent. But uh, Tordus is more fun, and it would enable a pretty powerful turn coming up here if we can survive, as it will set up a nice life gain engine with Titania. So I'm still gonna go for it just to showcase it here. Opponent passes. So yeah, play Titania. And then attack. And then we can also play Flesh Gorger thanks to the extra mana. Get back Fetch Land. And this is not what a burn deck wants to see. Back up to 8. And then now we're also in range of uh, Virtue of Persistence being an option. 3 mana Flesh Gorger is good enough for now. And then now we should be in the clear, and our opponent agrees. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine head. Can set up a turn 3 Shieldreds in a variety of ways. Turn 1 Swamp, and now I'm even liking turn 3 Tortoise more than Shieldred if we're up against a black midrange deck, which could easily have answers to the Apocalypse. And Tortoise is more likely to provide immediate value. A Mirex. Okay, and turn to Underdog. Yeah, I'm going for Iron Crank here over Bramble Familiar. Familiar just more likely to be answered. And I want to ensure turn 3 Tortoise. So our opponent's Black White. Just gotta hope to mill over a land with Tortoise, because if we don't, we're gonna be pretty sad. Concealing Curtains could mess things up. But not before we get Tortoise down. And we did find a land, luckily. So next turn we'll have access to at least 5 mana. Our opponent maybe a Tokens deck. Would love to get an attack in with a Tortoise, so we can maybe mill another land. And with Go for the Throat and Virtue to clear a path, that's not unlikely. So, before drawing, go for the throw at Shieldred. Attack, and if they block with Curtains, we can finish it off with Virtue of Persistence. Did not mill another land, sadly. Could also just play Untapped Lands Shieldred, which is likely still better. Even though we could set up the 7 mana Virtue next turn already. And yeah, that's probably worth it. Kill Curtains, play Tap Land, and then next turn with Wastes we'll get to 7 mana. And then the graveyard's pretty full of creatures since we didn't mill lands. Bones got the Virtue of Loyalty, but we can still attack with Tortoise and at least trade, which I think is worth it. I guess I won't have any blockers back, but they might have removal anyway. So, taking a bit of a risk here by attacking, but I'm hoping we can mill over a couple more lanes. Could, instead of playing Virtue, just go Shieldred plus Familiar. Could even activate Argoth. Could have also considered doing that before attacking to make it more likely that we mill the land. So we certainly don't lack options. So our opponent's got 7 on the board, let's say they blitz underdog, they could have 10, put us to 1. But then we should be able to stabilize by getting back Flesh Gorger. So, I think I still go for it. They have another shield root, then we're still okay. Since let's say our opponent would attack for 7, then drain us down to uh, 2. And then I guess before we gain life... They would drain us with Shieldred again, but then we can just play our own Shieldred. So yeah, let's go for it. Now Black White could have answers to enchantments in the form of a Rite of Oblivion comes to mind. Could be good in a token strategy. But if we can survive this next turn, I like my chances. I guess the Fortress is also pretty scary when we're low on life. I do have a Cottage which could animate and make a food token as well. Missionary with Kicker. 
Get back shielded, I presume, no curtains, so they can play it right away. Does have defender until it transforms, so opponent is just trying to get as much power and toughness in play with virtue as possible. But uh, yeah, go for flesh gorger, I think. And then Tortoise does not have a good attack anymore, but I can play Shieldred plus another Tortoise. And then we should still be okay. If our opponent animates Fortress, we'll be at 2. And then we have Flesh Gorger on defense. I think we still decline. Although it would potentially help me pump Flesh Gorger before setting up an attack. And I guess we have enough mana with double Tortoise now, sure. Okay, pass a turn. And hope they can't answer a Flesh Gorger, otherwise we could be in trouble. I guess what I said earlier about being able to gain life with her own shielded, if there's two in play, the triggers go on the stack in order of active player, non-active player, so the non-active trigger would resolve first. So I guess in that case our opponent would drain us for two with their shielded before we gain two, so that may not have worked out. Just as a side note, and then the next step is probably to get back Glissa, so we can try and destroy their enchantment. Would also love to find our uh, Titania with Argoth. And then with a couple Argoth activations we can quickly fill the graveyard. And now with double Tortoise, it's pretty cheap to activate Argoth to make a bear. Can still only use it as a sorcery, so it's not like I can mill before reanimating with Virtue of Persistence. And it looks like our opponent may have timed out here. Not sure if they disconnected or if they gave up. So Glissa versus Flesh Gorger number two. I want to say it's time for Glissa. Then Shieldred will gain some life back. Can fetch quest at the very least. Or cast a seven mana Flesh Gorger here. And then could also be reasonable to attack with the first Flesh Gorger just to get out of range. And if we can trade off now it's probably for the best before their creatures get any bigger. Also have to worry about an opposing Wandering Emperor, I suppose, exiling Flesh Gorger, in which case I wouldn't gain any life. But then they might have attacked, planning to give their creature a first strike counter as well. So interesting spot. I guess we could just play another Flesh Gorger and pass. And then maybe even play the uh, familiar as a 2-drop, as opposed to keeping it for fetch quests, since we have so many mana sinks with all our various activated abilities. And just play around Wandering Emperor by passing. Looks like our opponent is back, so maybe just a brief disconnect. Could be dead to an Elspeth giving one of their creatures flying. So that could have been a reason to attack with the Flesh Gorger, despite potentially running into an Emperor. Now we're also empty-handed, so the Curtains isn't as effective if it transforms. And then next turn I can look into equipping Flesh Gorger with Everflame. And getting an attack in. And we'll get back another Flesh Gorger. Take our draw step. And find another Tortoise. Okay, so start by activating Argoth, I want to say. This will also help put more creatures in Graveyard for Virtue of Persistence. Then we can play Tortoise. And then thanks to Familiar, still equip Everflame. Thirty cards left in Library. And the best we can do is a Death Camp Glade. And then Glissa could also attack. Do I send a smaller Flesh Gorger? At least it will trade for one creature, so I think that's fine. Don't think we were quite at the point where we can attack all out. Opponent still has a pretty threatening board state. Double block makes sense. Definitely should have considered making the attacks before playing out the rest of my turn. Now we get to destroy an enchantments. Okay, 
All right, looks like our opponent may have given up or timed out. Hard to say. Glissa gets to destroy their virtue, and then Flesh Gorgers get to connect. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. If we're up against a creature deck against control, this is pretty weak. Turn one mountain, all right, so pretty gland with his hand. Now we face a interesting decision already. I think now with Cottage, just play Cottage. Since Cutdown's unlikely to kill the two drop, they play with a plus one counter from Kumano. And then we can go for the throat next turn, or maybe cut down plus Seed of Hope. Another Kumano, so no creature getting a plus one counter. But now we'll at least have go for the throat to kill their hasty three drop, whether it's Godric or Squee. And if they don't have anything, I guess we'll cut down Kumano, Seed of Hope, and go on with our life. Wow, opponent activating Foundry, that's surprising. So I'm pretty happy to take out their creature land now. And deny a bit of mana. So our opponent must have a lot of burn spells in hand or just a lot of other lands. Uh, so yeah, let's cut down. And then Seed of Hope. And we found Glissa and Virtue Persistence, both excellent. What is better? We're not really ramping towards a 7 mana enchantment, so we're mainly looking at the 2 mana removal spell. And I guess if our opponent's hand is mostly burn spells. They could easily kill Glissa, and then it's important to answer their threats. So I think I actually prefer Virtue given how this game's been going on. And then would be nice to combine Titania with Seed of Hope so we can maybe gain extra life if we mill a land, but we don't have triple green. So I think Titania still makes a bit more sense than Flash Gorger, just because it survives a 3 damage removal spell, so at least it can trade for an etching and soak up a burn spell. Possible our opponent's got Monstrous Rage in hand. They're just gonna double burn Titania. Okay. And this is kind of what I mentioned, where I wanted a Virtue as opposed to Glissa. If we were to just play Glissa, opponent's got another Lightning Strike to kill it, then in the meantime we're taking a lot of damage from Etching, and that's how we can potentially fall behind. Now, I think we just Virtue, keep up, go for the Throat, slash Seed of Hope. And then we should still have a healthy life total by the time we play our creatures out. I don't think I go for the Throat Etching, if that's the only creature presented. Can still play 3 mana Flesh Gorger and go for the Throat next turn. And then at some point we can animate Cottage as well. And yeah, also good to gain a bit of life with Seed of Hope. So another pretty nice addition for this archetype. I'm hesitant to play more than two copies, because the more instants and sorceries we add, the more likely we are to miss with Seed of Hope and not reveal any permanence, which would be a disaster. But I think two copies is reasonable. Can smooth out your draws, help uh, mill some key cards in the graveyard that we can then also reanimate. Just a land for now. And an Overlook. So I will keep up Go for the Throat, plus uh, play Flash Gorger. And then... Next turn maybe Animate Cottage, turn after we could play Virtue of Persistence. Bone's gonna animate Smishra's Foundry. Could see a 2 mana Witch Stalker Frenzy. Which is a reason to go for the Throat Etching now, so they can't cast a 2-mana Frenzy. Only reason to potentially go to Blockers is if our opponent were planning to go for a Monstrous Rage. After we block Etching, since we can't go for the Throat, the Artifact Creature here. I think I just played safe, kill Etching, and then if they still attack, it means no Frenzy, but instead maybe Monstrous Rage. Although trading is still reasonable, since opponent would have to lose Foundry and their Pump Spell, and then eventually we'll get Flash Gorger back with our 7-mana enchantment. 
I suppose it could also be double Monstrous Rage, but nope, just a trade. So yeah, could have potentially punished that had we let him attack, block etching, and then go for the throw turn response. But I think we're still in great shape. Activate Cottage. And then best to exile burn spells, which they could get back with Adversary. And play Overlook. And then next turn, Virtue of Persistence is looking great. Could also animate Cottage again, sack a food token. There's Adversary, so that's going to get back the second play with Fire, presumably. Could also go for Monstrous Rage. Which also makes sense. Hit us for 6 and have a 4 powered creature left over. Could also fetch quest. So yeah, it's still a little bit of a precarious situation since our opponent does get to play something else next turn and hit us for a lot. But I imagine if we get back Flash Gorger we should be in the clear. Unless our opponent finds a Witch Talker Frenzy of the top to kill it. But then we'll still have mana to sack food tokens. Fetch quest seems a bit risky when one of the best cards we could hit is Virtual Persistence in the first place. I guess another Flash Gorger also would have been nice. Okay, opponent with another top decked adversary, which is one of their best draws. Finds play with fire, so yeah, we are pretty low. But between getting back Flash Gorger and having Food Token left, I like my chances. And this was also a good reason to kill Kumano before uh, trying to block with Flesh Gorgers, so it didn't get exiled, so we could still get it back. Okay, so I could take a bit of a risk by fetching Quest. Seems safer to animate Cottage, attack, keep up Food Token. I guess I should sacrifice it right away, so I don't uh, have to be afraid of a Lightning Strike in response. Although I guess we would still die to Witch Talker Frenzy, since our opponent can hit us for 7. So, I guess the absolute safest play would be Double Familiar, keep up Food Token, and then next turn we can get back Glissa at the very least. It looks okay. Could also fetch Quest, hope to hit another Flash Gorger, but uh, yeah, let's just play it safe. And then I'll just sank the food token now. And then if we get one hidden with Flash Gorger, we should be in the clear. With five lands, there's no one top deck that kills me, I don't think. Maybe Act of Treason on Flash Gorger, but haven't seen that in most modern red decks. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So the Flash Gorger virtue plan here worked out. All right, so we get to see our black green turtles in action. And yeah, Tortoise is a pretty fun card if it gets going. The sooner we get it in play, the better. So it definitely pairs well with those two mana ramp cards. And then our deck is certainly equipped to deal with the Monoret aggro, thanks to all the cheap removal and the various life gain cards. This does mean that we give up some percentage points when playing against other mid-range and control strategies. Cards like Cutdown aren't always that great, and even Virtue of Persistence to an extent also loses effectiveness when we need to take care of larger creatures. But that's the give and take of Best of One Standard, where you can't really be prepared to beat everything unless you're playing a very proactive deck yourself and even then you're still at the mercy of a lot of factors. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.